that being said, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a way that's not just like beating on the photographer for that. But it's just like mind blowing to me that <laughs> this is why have you not removed your images? If this is such a if this hurt you so bad, what are you doing? Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. Hello, podcast listeners. So today we have a very special episode for you. It is actually news, topical, reactionary. Look at that. So we this is coming out on Monday. We are recording it Sunday night. So this is as current as it can possibly get. <laughs> for sure. The article that we are responding to today in Photo Op, the Photo Opinion podcast, is a Petapixel article that popped up in my Facebook feed. So, photographer is devastated after her unsplash photo was used in Crass UK ad campaign. So, we will link to the our original article below so you can take a look at it for yourself, but we're going to give you a quick summary of what happened. So, the photographer um, took a photo of two ballerinas in kind of like this brick white art studio and uploaded it to a free royalty free stock photo site and royalty free is the type of photo and then free is because this particular site does not charge you to download it is just free stock photos which uh is one of the things we will definitely be talking about today oh yeah um but then what happened is uh, the UK government is doing an ad campaign to get people in cyber, which, I mean, if they're trying to get people to, like, study STEM and stuff, that's one thing. But what they did is they slapped this text on a, the heavily cropped photo, cropping out one of the two ballerinas. And what they said is, Fatima's next job could be in cyber. She just doesn't know it yet. Rethink, reskill, reboot. And basically, the insinuation of the ad is this ballerina is completely worthless and she can't get a job being a ballerina. Her next job will be as a web developer, which, uh, first of all, crazy insulting mm -hmm. um, and complete disregard and devaluation of the arts, which is another thing I'm sure we'll, we'll get to today. Um but the the photographer who actually saw it, um, they knew it was their photo because they woke up one day and a bunch of people had tweeted and tagged them and it, their photo was just kind of everywhere. And so the corrected version in the headline of the Petapixel article says Desiree's because first of all, uh, they basically took the name and changed the race of the person who was in it. Second of all, they this photographer was uh, insulted that they used... Uh, her photo for something that she does not stand for or believe in and this insinuation of like the arts are dumb you need to be a web developer otherwise what are you doing mm -hmm. um yeah so so that's kind of the the bulk of the article again it's linked below if you want to if you actually want to read it for yourself but that is basically the thing that is happening right now in news this is a current just happened thing and so we're gonna talk about opinions on it so um i think before we kind of get into the nitpicky of opinions i really think we should go over um what are your rights as a person downloading stock photos and what are your rights as a photographer uploading stock photos and like what are the things that you need uh to to protect yourself and then we'll kind of get into more of like do we think stock photos are a good idea? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Um, as far as as stock photos in general, um, the it's all about the license. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, stock photog photography sites have a wide variety of licenses. Um, and while while there's a wide variety, there are basically three uses that you can kind of boil it down to. Yeah, though. yeah. Um, so the first one is Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. uh, Creative Commons is uh, with attribution. Um, I uploaded a fun photo to my Flickr account. I put it under the Creative Commons license, and then someone is allowed to use that photo in a creative or artistic, non-commercial manner. Mm -hmm. That photo is not allowed to uh, promote, endorse 
purchase or sell anyone or anything, and they have to reference me as the original artist by using that photo. Mm -hmm. So that is that is Creative Commons license. That's that's the first one, main one. The second check, one is royalty. Check your Creative Commons licensing things though, because uh, that is yes. not always the case. There are commercial allowed there are attribution free creative commons licenses most creative right. commons require attribution um and can't that's, be used that's for just kind of but... like the large like yeah. like you said Double there check. are probably <clears throat> 40 different you know licenses yeah. available that's just kind of like one of the big ones yes definitely. um the second one is a uh, rights managed so a rights managed license, uh, those photos are generally more expensive than royalty free, which I'm going to get to in a second. A rights managed license means that um, I want to use this photo for this thing. And then the person who owns that, whether it is the creative agency on behalf of the photographer or the photographer themselves, can say, yes, you are allowed to use it for this purpose. No, you are not allowed to use it for that purpose. A perfect example is that really old Friends episode where Joey ends up in a VD billboard. <laughs> <laughs> so so if you, he was using a agent using rights managed mm -hmm. for that uh, image, then he would be allowed to say, no, we are managing this photo and you are not allowed to use it for that purpose. Um, and then, of course, finally, the third one is royalty free, which if you buy a photo under a royalty free license, you basically have carte blanche to do whatever you want with that photo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Um, as usual with these things, um, definitely check the particulars of what of the license that you're either uploading uh, to on a site and selecting or downloading from um, to make sure you don't get in hot water because there is some variance. But those three pretty much cover it um so what was the license of uh what was the site and what was the license of the yeah, site so, uh with this particular story ben? so the site that popped up in the article is unsplash, unsplash. and i was familiar with unsplash before i saw this article yep. uh, it is basically a stock photo site that says we're trying to disrupt the stock photo industry and photographers upload their work for free and then people download any of the photos in the catalog for free mm-hmm and it is a way for photographers to, I guess, get exposure and for designers to have a cheap way instead of like instead of buying, you know, super expensive iStock photo images. Because mm -hmm. um, I know iStock is expensive. There are other cheaper ones. But yeah, um, yeah that's that's kind of. the Yeah, Unsplash is is a substantial and i would say increasing force in the stock photo industry even though they don't uh charge for anything um yeah everybody everything on there is uh, there are, i think there are about two million images last time i checked um oh, wow. on there and uh yeah they're all uploaded by photographers um for free and they have their own license which is the unsplash license they actually started um, using a Creative Commons Zero license, and they have since refined that a little bit and now call it the Unsplash license um, on their site, which uh, basically is um, the, uh, the Creative Commons Zero, which is the base of this license, is essentially uh, you can download and use this photo for any reason, um, as many times as you want, commercial or not commercial, with no attribution. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much, uh, it's free for all. And uh, the Unsplash license is essentially that, plus um, you can't like mass download all of Unsplash's uh, images and use them to create another Unsplash, basically. It just protects them from uh, you sure. trying to compete with them. But yeah, that's pretty much, that's all that is really the extra on top of that makes the Unsplash license. Otherwise, it's essentially, it's all free for any reason, no attribution required. Um and yeah, uh, as as it uh, turns out, sometimes uh, things are used for free um, in a way that the original photographer didn't uh, anticipate in the case of so the story. So it did say in the article that they were working with their legal team to, you know, basically sue or see what rights they have to be able to reclaim this. Um, they don't and, really have any. And 
while you and I are both in America, laws mm -hmm. may be different, but let's just stick with American laws for the moment because that's what we know mm -hmm. and that's will generally broadly apply probably most of our audiences here. So there you go. So uh, what are your rights? My dad's actually an attorney. So I've had this drilled into my head since I was like eight. <laughs> um, but uh, basically your rights as a photographer are the moment that you click the shutter, that image is your image. Um, however, there are a lot of things to be said about uh, the subject of the image and then and then when you go to sell that image, kind of like who owns rights type thing. Mm -hmm. So um, really, really simply, if I'm doing like wedding photos, I own the wedding photo unless I sign away the copyright, which please don't do that. Don't do that. Um, so I own the copyright to those photos. Um, so then what happens when you upload to a stock photo site is you still technically own the copyright, but then that stock photo site has a license to then redistribute your work under whatever terms that are on their website. Some pay you and some like Unsplash do not. So um, when you upload to Unsplash, first of all, uh, it says very much in Unsplash's terms and conditions, because it is a free service, they don't look at or monitor your uploads. So mm -hmm. they just kind of say, by uploading, you, one, own the copyright and are allowing us to use it, and two, any models you have signed releases. Mm -hmm. So so one thing that could happen here is um, if the, let's go with situation A. Situation A is the photographer got a model release from this shoot from the models that appeared in the photo, mm -hmm. um, and the models uh, signed that release saying, yes, you can use this for stock photos then what happens is the model has lost their right to do anything about the photo. And then the photographer by uploading the photo has lost their right to do anything because it was downloaded and used under the stock photos terms of service. Um, so basically there's nothing they can do. The only thing that I imagine happening here is if this photographer screwed up and did not get a model release from Desiree, the model in the photo, then the model could go after the photographer. Yes. But the stock photo site is protected because mm -hmm. they did everything in their terms of service. And then the UK government that then downloaded and used the images, uh, they did everything under the terms of service as well, just because they did it on a thing that you may or may not agree with is completely irrelevant to this discussion, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about it. Um, um, I'm checking this right now and uh, it doesn't appear that there's any legal action pending against the photographer. That doesn't mean there won't be any in the future. Um, but yeah, that's, that is the only course of action is just if there's no model release and it can't really, it can't really change too much um, other than they can try to be made whole um, from the photographer themselves. But, uh, but yeah, and, and we should note, um, by the way, the UK government has pulled the ad um, and admitted it was in poor taste. Um, that being said, they didn't have to, um, they didn't legally have to pull it. Um, they pulled it obviously due to the controversy, but I actually um, saw this article before yeah. they pulled it. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at updates literally as we're talking, because oh, I was perfect. curious if they had pulled it and they have, like pulled we it. said, people, this is topical. This yeah, is happening this right is now, right now. Um, they have pulled the ad and admitted it was in poor taste and the UK culture secretary has also called it crass. Uh, spokesperson for number 10 Downing street has said that the ad was not appropriate um and yeah I, I agree with all those things um that being said they still made it and approved it and it probably went through multiple levels of approval so they're only really saying this to save face because Due to the um, backlash. people yeah. blew up at them about it um that being said again they did not have to do this i appreciate that they did this it's good pr it's good pr to do this. or it's well but they legally do not have they to. legally don't have to um they, they were 100 percent within their rights so don't take the pull the takedown as uh, legal repercussions because it is not they did this of their own no volition. legal pr yeah and it's yeah. and it does not set precedent they no did this, this is not they wanted to save setting. face and yeah. that's the only yeah. reason so so we say all of this not to slam the photographer or not to slam unsplash we no. say all of and i truly wish this photographer well um I honestly, I would be as upset as they are if I were in their shoes right now. Mm -hmm. um, but we kind of want to use this story to 
illustrate some of the things about stock photography, the good and the bad, um, and kind of talk about that. So the one thing that, um, like there's the two headed coin to stock photography. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, well, I can make a lot of money or so-and-so told me they can make a lot of money through stock photography. And technically that's true. Um, we can kind of break down that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but the flip side of that coin is what do you lose by using your photos as stock photography? Mm -hmm. So certainly um, the reason why we're talking about this is you're losing your control over your images. Um, maybe you're doing stock photography purely as a, uh, a money-making venture and you don't really care about uh, about where the images go and and who uses them for what um but if they are representative of your art of your your vision of of the world and uh what you're you know you're, you're sharing that out there with the world if you put it up on a stock photography site and somebody else sees a different vision for that image um you have just given up uh, uh, given that up. And in this case, uh, sometimes that person might be much bigger and more notable than you, and they might set the, uh, the expectation around that image, the thoughts around that image due to their actions. And that, yeah, that is a big, uh, a big, big thing to be uh, concerned about when it comes to stock photography, for sure. Yeah. So, so the thing to be said about stock photography is I think a lot of people see it as the get rich quick scheme mm -hmm. of like, hey, guess what? You could start selling stock photography and make passive income, that magical mm -hmm. phrase. Um, but the realistic thing about stock photography is that you are probably not popular enough or your photo is probably not popular enough mm -hmm. to make the kind of money that people are telling you is possible. Yeah. So while it is technically possible, um, I just looked it up just now. Most stock photography sites uh, pay you about 25 cents per image per month. So this I'm, and that is if you're like popular and people are actually buying it. If mm -hmm. no one's buying it, you could make even less. Yeah. These are like if you are actually getting good amount of downloads on one of the popular stock photography sites. So I think the photographers I know who shoot stock, they just shoot stock. They'll have a bunch of models come in with a bunch of random props and a bunch of random backgrounds. And then they will just, you know, they will just shoot for a couple of hours and then they will spend the rest of their day tagging and meta tagging and descriptions and just uploading and kind of like all of the really boring, tedious file management stuff, mm -hmm. which is an absolute full-time job. And then they upload, you know, let's say a thousand photos from the set that, that day. And then they're hoping that they get like, I don't know, like a hundred bucks maybe. Yeah. So, <laughs> so all of this is like you, this is the, model where you are shotgunning a huge volume of stuff mm -hmm. hoping that someone likes something in your set to be able to download it a bunch of times yeah um so this is a volume and luck game um yes the, the other aspect of this is hugely luck um sometimes stock photos have blown up because for whatever reason something happens in the world and all of a sudden um stock photos of a particular subject are now super sought after and valuable um being that we're in COVID uh, times right now, I imagine that stock photography of anything medical is really huge right now. And that might have been much less of a market before um, this time. So absolutely. So a lot of this is luck and just kind of the cultural um, landscape at the time. Um, so you're just kind of rolling the dice and, and, you know, some stock photographers shoot an incredible range of different styles and subjects and and objects and props and all sorts of stuff um because they're just trying to hit some thing somewhere that becomes popular and and people download it and use it so um luck is huge in this uh, like like many things uh <laughs> many get get rich quick schemes uh some people a very small number of people get lucky and make it but most do not so so here's my personal opinion on stock photography mm -hmm. If you are shooting something specifically for stock photography, awesome, cool. great, shoot, sh do that set. The model knows it's for stock photography. You know it's for stock photography. You know, do your set, upload it, make your money. Good for you, man. Go mm -hmm. for it. Um, what I don't think is good 
is I'm going to shoot this set for some other reason. And then I'm going to use it for stock photography. Mm -hmm. So like I was shooting um, some headshots for some lawyers and they were like, I need to make sure this will absolutely not under any circumstances be used for any stock. You know, mm -hmm. there's that mm -hmm. kind of kind of thing of like, yeah, they don't want their headshot to be out on a stock photo site and end up in this precarious situation that just happened to this photographer. So I have a very different model release from the models that I use for that kind of like stock photography type stuff or TFP type stuff than I do for actual paying clients. Like they will never end up on a stock photo site. Um, my other opinion about it is honestly that the earnings from stock photography and again, 10 years ago, stock photography was a much bigger industry because you didn't have these free or low cost disruptors. So photographers actually could make good amounts of money from stock photography. But now because there is such a supply and much less demand, a lot of people can shoot stuff themselves and they're not willing to pay. Um, and there are all these market disruptors that are bringing the cost down. Uh, you'd basically the amount of time and effort it takes to get approved, get uploaded and meta tag and description, all of the things that you have to upload is not worth the income that you would be making from it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend eight hours of my life to make about 25 cents. Yeah. And we're talking, um, you know, about these <laughs> kind of silly, small amounts of money um, with stock, even if you're, successful so to speak on a stock site but on unsplash it's you don't even make unsplash that. is free it's free it is it is purely <laughs> exposure yeah so the whole point of the site is to give the artists exposure mm -hmm. which if some of these artists like they download their images and then some company is like you know what i just like this one dude's portfolio i'm gonna hire that dude to do a bunch yeah. of stuff for a company if that's actually happened amazing yeah. i can't fault them for it that's fantastic it's never happened to me before but it doesn't mean it can't happen to someone else theoretically uh, that being said uh, uh unsplash's license and creative commons zero doesn't require attribution so although you might get some exposure um more than likely somebody's going to grab your picture and use it and not uh True. attribute you at all just True. they'll FYI. just they'll just know it was on unsplash they yeah. won't know who shot it <laughs> uh there's some uh, side note there is some amazing stuff on unsplash like really fantastic photography oh absolutely. There. i'm i am blown away by the stuff that people upload for free there just for free use not even attribution it's crazy to me as a designer <laughs> doing like magazines and catalog layouts and you know advertisements for companies mm -hmm. unsplash has been a phenomenal resource to oh i really need this place holder before the client actually gives me their actual stuff that looks close enough or you know they just need something that like i need to composite some grass or something mm -hmm. and there happens to be this one photo on unsplash that someone did a close-up of grass blades with bokeh that i can easily cut out type thing so you know it's been a fantastic resource for compositing and editing and um you know all the designer stuff i've had to do throughout the years but as a photographer like i would never personally upload to it because i don't want this happening with my photos yeah yeah exactly uh it's i i definitely have used unsplash um unsplash is super um super handy in a lot of different designy kind of situations that i've been in um that being said i've never uploaded anything to it i probably won't uh seeing as one i don't think a lot of my images are good enough to stand with some of the amazing stuff that's on there and two for obvious reasons i don't really want my stuff used for any reason without attribution um so that is a that is an issue those who have uploaded stuff to unsplash though that i've used um major props to you i uh I'm amazed that you would give stuff away like that for free. Um, and thank you. Uh, but I won't personally partake. <laughs> so Stuart kind of coming back to the article, what lessons can photographers take from this, uh, event that just occurred and going forward, especially regarding stock photography? Yeah. Well, I think there's a few, uh, clear takeaways here. Just a few. Um, just a few. Uh, one is, just in general, be very, very careful um, with uploading any of your images for stock photography. Um, and we're especially not if saying were... don't do stock photography. Yeah, we're photography. not saying don't do it. No, no. We're just saying be careful. If you're shooting something specifically for stock, you know what you're doing. Go for it, right? Um, but if you're doing 
this kind of situation where you have images that you like, that you think you want to upload for stock, be very careful with it. Uh, go through, seriously, I know it sucks to read all the legalese, but go through the licenses of the site, uh, license or licenses of the site you're uploading to. Make sure you know exactly what it means, exactly what you're, you're giving up in exchange for either just exposure or maybe um, a quarter here and there. Or, <laughs> you know like 25 cents um but it's per month that passive month. income yeah oh man a quarter per month a big a big spender <laughs> um so just be go through all of that all of that legalese and make sure you know exactly what you're giving up when you're uploading to to those sites um definitely think about about the short version that is true for 90 percent of the yeah. sites is once you upload it it is out of your hands and it Correct. can be used for any reason and if something like this happens you can't get mad about it because they paid you correct for this to happen yeah yeah and in the case of unsplash they don't they don't, don't pay, pay you. you it's just for exposure um, so yes, be very careful about uploading to sites, read the licenses, um, really think about what your images could be used for. Um, if you are at all, uh, concerned about what your photos might be used for, don't upload, um, because they'll probably be used for that. And then you'll yeah. regret it later when you can't do anything. The, the only, the only caveat that I would say is there are, and these are sites are more expensive mm -hmm. and less popular. Mm -hmm. So you'll probably get less money if your site, if your photo blows up on one of these sites versus if it blows up on Unsplash or iStock photo, mm -hmm. but um, go with a site that does rights managed, not royalty free mm -hmm. because if you go with a rights managed then you can say yes i want my photo to be used on that no i don't want my photo to be used on that exactly yeah so if you're at all concerned but you still want to have your photos up as stock um rights managed for rights managed sites for sure if it's any other site um be very careful and don't do it if you are feeling um in any way like uh you have any concerns there um that being said if you get past that point and you're okay with the little to no income you're okay with uh just exposure in the case of unsplash you're okay with anybody using your photo for any reason possibly or most likely without uh attribution then i give a cautious go for it um <laughs> i guess <laughs> well, well like, like i said back in the day a lot of photographers told me do stock photography yeah. and i asked them why and they said because i make good money and i'm sure that their income from stock photography has tailed off as all these new people have entered the markets mm -hmm. and when i say people i mean companies like unsplash yeah. and the the all the new stock companies that are making photography cheaper and easier to access mm -hmm. um that said if you're a designer go find these free sites that people upload incredible stuff but yeah, crazy, if you're a photographer um yeah if you have thought about all of this and you get to the end of this thought process and you're like no yeah i still want to do it great there mm -hmm. is probably a paycheck at the end of the road we're not saying it's a big paycheck but there's mm -hmm. probably a paycheck to be had at yeah. the end of the road for uploading your stock photography and if that's if that's what it takes and that's you know what gets you by awesome good Excellent. good for you yeah um so specifically kind of for all of this, we've been talking about Unsplash a mm -hmm. lot. If you want to hear about Unsplash for roughly another hour, um, uh, Stuart, you found a great video we can refer people to. Yes. Um, I found this uh, video from Zach Arias, which uh, he is, he's pretty awesome. Um, you should just check out his videos in general. He's got some great stuff, but yeah. he has a video that he uh, put out a couple years ago. It's still very relevant though. Um, thoughts on Unsplash. He talks uh, more specifically about the potential particulars of using Unsplash, about its license, about um, being cautious with model releases on Unsplash, um, all of that sort of uh, stuff. And uh, and he's awesome. He's awesome to listen to. So um, I have watched this whole video and um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend that you check it out for some further informa information. So we'll link that uh, in the description yeah. as well. For if you, you to... want a deep dive into all of the yep. technical this stuff about dive. Unsplash, we're going to refer you there because 
I'm I'm not gonna do that. Yep. I'm not gonna good. make you guys <laughs> suffer through that. That's the but, bonus. Uh, someone uh, has someone has already done work. it for us. <laughs> so yeah, go listen to Zach Arias. Uh, he's an Atlanta-based uh, uh, commercial photographer, portrait photographer, and he does incredible work. And he always makes interesting, educational, and entertaining videos. So yep. uh, there will be a link down to the description in that. Um, and this also kind of brings up uh, an interesting thing about uh, valuing or rather rather devaluing art and photography mm -hmm. um, just in the world we live in. And I think that'll be an interesting discussion for a future day. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do some thinking on that and, uh, and maybe uh, we can put out a show about the devaluation of photography. <laughs> so yeah, maybe not next week, but uh, make sure that you subscribe. Uh, if you are watching our beautiful faces on YouTube, then you can hit the subscribe button there. Uh, otherwise, just subscribing on your p platform of choice for the podcast. Um, and do head over to Apple Podcasts if you have an Apple account and leave us a review there because most other podcast app draw their reviews from Apple anyway. Yep. So um, if you found this interesting, educational, and want to, of course, hear that future episode episode on devaluing art and photography um make sure you're subscribed and it'll be coming up soon thanks for listening if you have questions or ideas for future episodes you can email us at hello at photo dash op dot show watch us on ben's youtube channel at non creative as in om nom nom share this with a friend and you can listen to photo op anywhere podcasts are sold or downloaded because it's free